Welcome. In this session on natural deduction, we'll begin an exploration of semantic entailment. Let's recall from the syntactic part that we have a sequent. And a sequent is a formula one, formula two, and so on, up to formula n, and that from these premises, we have a conclusion. That is a syntactic statement. That is, this is a valid sequent if, if and only if, that is, it's, we define this to be a valid sequent, meaning that from these premises, we can prove the conclusion using the rules of natural deduction. <clears throat> so, now, what we want is the semantics. Semantics. Um, and we'll say that relate premises to a conclusion. So that is what we want to do here. Let's introduce two new terms. We will say M is a model or some authors will say evaluation of a set of atoms and in our session where we introduce truth tables each row of a truth table is a model we'll also introduce capital gamma and capital gamma is a set of n well-formed formulas. And this is intended to correspond to our premises. So it will look like formula 1, formula 2, and so on, until we get to formula n. And what we want to do is relate this idea of models and a set of formulas to this idea of proof. And for us to get there, we need to have a definition. And our definition will be, we will say, um, a semantic entailment holds is defined as um, this will be gamma and we'll say there's a double bar. Very important to note how many bars we're using now. The premises semantically entail the conclusion. And that definition is for every model M in which every formula in the set evaluates to T the conclusion also evaluates T. Let's go through some simple examples to be sure that we understand that. So let's consider first, let's say, does P and Q semantically entail P? So let's put a question mark there. And 
One way that we can answer this is by writing out the truth table. So the truth table is P, Q, and so this is the model, is that's true, true, false, false, true, false, true, false. And the premise we're interested in is P conjoined with Q. And we know that that truth table looks like true, false, false, false. And then the question is, so let's add a new column. And in this case, so what we do is we put down the atoms, then we put down the premise or premises, and then we put down the supposed conclusion. And in this case, it's P. What we then do is we perform the valuation mechanically. So here, P is going to be basically a copy of the first column. So that will be T, T, F, F. We now have to understand this carefully. So this says for every model, that is for every row of the truth table, in which every premise, so we only have one premise, evaluates to T, the proposed conclusion also evaluates to T. In this case, there's only one row. So let's circle where the premise is true, and let's circle where the supposed conclusion is true. And here we see this is the only model in which the premise evaluates to T, and in that row, the supposed conclusion evaluates to T. So we would say that P and Q semantically entail P. Let's try a second example. Let's try two. Let's try P or Q. Does that semantically entail P? And our process is going to be fairly similar. We're going to write down the truth table. So we write down the atoms, which are T, T, F, F, T, F, T, F. And we write down the premise, which if it's a well-formed formula, it has parentheses around it. And that is P or Q. And that we know evaluates to T, 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 F. And then to be careful, we'll put the supposed conclusion, which is P. And that, as before, is a copy of the first column. And that will be T, T, F, F. We then look at each model, which is each valuation, in which this premise is true. And here it's true, true, true. And we look at the corresponding model for the supposed conclusion, which is T, T, F. And our problem here is that for this model, we have the premise is true and the supposed conclusion is false. So in this case, we know that P or Q does not semantically entail P. Now let's try a third example. Suppose that the sequence that we're interested in is P or Q, and there's a second premise, which is not P or Q, and we are wondering whether Q 
is semantically entailed by these premises. This is again, um, this again has two atoms in it, so that it will have a simple truth table, and the truth table will be for P and Q, will be T, T, F, F, T, F, T, F. I'll then put down premise one, which is P or Q, and that will be T, 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 F. I then put down the second premise, which is not P or Q. Now I must take a little more care. That is false or true is true. False or false is false. That is fa true or true is true. True or false is true. And I then have my supposed conclusion, which is Q. I look at each model in which all of the premises are true. Here I have all of the premises are true. Here I have all of the premises are true. And what of my supposed conclusion? Well, it is T, F, T, F. And here I see that the supposed conclusion is true in this model, the supposed conclusion is true in this model, and the other models don't matter for the purpose of establishing semantic entailment. So what I know is that these two premises do indeed semantically entail Q, or we would say that the semantic entailment holds. Let's try a fourth example. Let's suppose that what we want to know is whether P semantically entails Q or not Q. Here, we would write down the atoms as before, so that is P and Q, and what we have is this will be T, T, F, F, T, F, T, F, and then I put down my premise, which is P, and that is T, T, F, F, and I then put down my supposed conclusion, which is Q or not Q, and that is T, 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 T. I now take each model in which the premise is true, which is that row and that row, and I explore whether the supposed conclusion is also true. And here, it is true. So I can conclude that P semantically entails Q or not Q. What we've seen in these examples are, are all of the cases in which the semantic entailment holds, we could find a proof. And all of the cases in which we could find a proof, the semantic entailment holds. In subsequent sessions, we're going to explore these relationships a little deeper.